Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we are going to discuss how to run K-means cluster analysis in SPSS. Cluster analysis is a statistical technique used in social science to group individuals, objects or variables that are similar to each other into clusters. This method helps researchers identify patterns and structures within the data, facilitating the understanding of relationships and group dynamics. Cluster analysis is one of the advanced statistical techniques used to identify, classify objects or cases into homogeneous sets that behave similarly or show similar characteristics. In a simple language, we can say that the group having similar feature is classified as cluster. The analysis used to classify this cluster is known as cluster analysis. The difference between K-means clustering and the hierarchical clustering. We have already discussed the hierarchical clustering in SPSS in my previous video, kindly refer my playlist. Now we will see the difference. Algorithm type. This is partition based. This is hierarchical based. Initialization. It requires the number of clusters to be specified beforehand. In hierarchical clustering, no need to specify the number of clusters initially. Process iterative. This is agglomerative or divisive. Assignment assigns each data point to the nearest centroid, builds the hierarchy of clusters. Centroid calculations recalculate centroids as a mean of points in a cluster, not applicable. Convergence stops when assignments no longer change or after a fixed number of iterations, it converges. The algorithm converges, not applicable. Output flat partition. Here we get the output as a dendogram. Scalability. Better for large data sets. This is better for small to medium data sets. Cluster shape assumes clusters are spherical. Here can capture complex shapes also. Flexibility less flexible. This is more flexible in terms of distance met metrics and linkage criteria. Stability sensitive to initial centroid selection. Here more stable to the deterministic nature applications. Customer segmentation. Market basket analysis, image comprehension, document clustering. Here, gene expression data analysis, social network analysis, taxonomies and biology, document cl and document clustering. The basic difference between factor analysis and cluster analysis is that in factor analysis, factor analysis runs on variables, while the cluster analysis runs on cases. Now let's try to understand the concept of cluster analysis with these shapes. In how many ways we can cluster these shapes based on shape, color. So the first one is say triangle, square, round. According to the color. Okay. Now what name we will give to this cluster? The first one, triangle, square and circle. Based on the color, yellow, blue, green, red. Sum of internal angles. So, some of the internal angle is 360 degree and triangle. On which data type we can run cluster analysis? We can run on interval scaled variables, binary variables, nominal, ordinal and ratio variables, variables of mixed types. So, basically we can run on continuous as well as the categorical data. Examples of cluster analysis. First one is market segmentation. Customer seg segmentations. Companies use cluster analysis to segment their customer base into groups with similar purchasing behavior, preferences, or demographics. This allows for targeted marketing strategies and personalized customers, customer experiences. Product positioning. By identifying cluster of products that appeal to different market segments, business can better position their products and tailor marketing campaigns. Public health. This is outbreak investigations. Health organizations use cluster analysis to identify patterns in disease outbreaks determining which populations or regions are most affected and devising the targeted intervention strategies. Health Risk Assessment Cluster analysis can group individuals based on health-related behaviors or risk factors, helping in the design of preventative health programs. Social Media Analysis Social media platforms use cluster analysis to group users with similar behaviors, interests, or interaction patterns. This information is used for content recommendations and targeted advertising. Community detections. 
identifying clusters within the social networks helps in understanding the structure of online communities and the spread of information or influence. Crime analysis, crime hotspot detection. Law enforcement agencies use cluster analysis to identify crime hotspots by analyzing spatial and temporal patterns of the criminal activities. Offender profiling. Clustering criminal profiles based on the behavior patterns, modus operandi, and demographic characteristics to assist in investigations and prevention strategies. Minimum sample size. According to the format, Foreman suggests a minimum of 2 into m cases where m is the number of variables. For example, if you have 10 variables, you need at least 20 cases, that is 2 into 10. Dolnica recommends a minimum of 100 cases regardless of the number of variables to ensure stable clusters. Every Every proposes the number of cases should be at least 5 times the number of variables. For instance, if you have 10 variables, you need at least 50 cases, 5 into 10. For hierarchical clustering, Burns and Burns suggest a minimum of 150 cases to avoid overly fragmented clusters. Hair recommend. Hair recommend considering the purpose of the analysis, the heterogeneity of the population, and the desired precision of the results when determining the sample size. They advocate for a balance between the statistical power and practical constraints. Steps of K means clustering. First is initialization. Choose the number of clusters K. Randomly select K initial centroids. Assignment step. Assign each data point to the nearest centroid based on the distance, typically the Euclidean distance. So you don't need to worry about this. These steps are carried out by the software. Update the step. Calculate the new centroid of each cluster based on the data points assigned to that cluster. Repeat the assignment and update steps until the centroids no longer change significantly or for a fixed number of iterations. K means clustering step 1. So these are the data points. Choose the number of clusters. Decide on the number of clusters you want to create. This is typically based on prior knowledge or by testing different values to see which gives the best results. So for this data points, we will select three clusters K1, K2 and K3. Initialize the centroids. Randomly select K data points from the data set as the initial centroids of the cluster. So means the next step is the shifting of the mean. Assign each data point to the nearest centroid. The nearest is determined by the distance matrix chosen, usually the Euclidean distance. Step 4. Update the centroids. Recalculate the centroids of each cluster by finding the mean of all data points assigned to that cluster. This new mean becomes the new centroid. So again, it will iterate. Repeat until the convergence. Repeat steps 3 and 4 until the centroids no longer change significantly or until a predefined number of iterations are reached. Now let's run k means cluster analysis in our data set. So we are having this data in which in, in, in first column we are having the model of the car. There is a brand of the car and these are the features of the car. Miles per gallon, number of cylinders, displacement of the vehicle, horsepower of the vehicle, displacement rate, weight of the vehicle, half quarter time, or one foot quarter time, vertical and straight engine, that is V-shaped engine and, and straight engine, automatic and manual transmission, number of gears, number of carburetors. So we want to run K-means clustering, so we'll go and analyze, classify, K-means clustering, transfer all the features, not the model, not the brand, in variables, model in label cases by, number of clusters, we require 5, iterate, so let's specify the iteration as 100, continue, save, we will do it later on, Options, ANOVA table, and continue. Click. Let us take this cluster information for each case also. Continue. Click OK. And we got the initial cluster centers, iteration history, cluster membership is there, that the model belongs to which cluster. Final clusters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let 
me check in the data set no at present we don't have cluster membership in the data that we will see later on so the first interpretation is to be done for the ANOVA table MPG mean square degree of freedom error you have to see the significant value of all these variables and how many cases are there in each cluster see in cluster one there are 10 brands of car in cluster two seven three four brands in fourth cluster five in fifth cluster six now let's do the interpretation so i'll simply copy this click here copy let's do the interpretation of this anova table just focus on this p value the ANOVA table provided helps us to determine if the mean differences between the cluster for each variable are statistically significant. Let's understand this concept. There are five clusters. MPG for cluster 1 is 27.1, for second is 17, for third is 14.6, for fourth is 14.7 and fifth is 20.3. So the mean, uh, the mean in all these five clusters is significantly different from each other and therefore the five cluster solution so this variable contributes in in formation of the cluster for cylinder four seven eight eight six so we will have to see this uh, p value for all the variables they all are less than 0 0.05 and therefore all these variables contribute in the cluster formation the p-value tests the null hypothesis that the means of cl all clusters are equal. As p-value is less than 0 0.05, it indicates that there is a statistically significant difference between the clusters. The significant results from the ANOVA confirms that the variables, these variables, contribute to the distinction between the clusters. This supports the validity of the clustering solution, indicating that the clusters represent distinct groupings based on the given variables. So the number of clusters, this we have already seen. Now we have to do the interpretation of final cluster centers. So again, we will go in SPSS, final cluster centers. Now we require the chart for this. Double click on it, select this, right click, create graph, bar. So for cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, cluster four and cluster five. Now each cluster has got some feature. So in cluster one, the MPG is the mean is 27.5, number of cylinders four, displacement this much, horsepower D rate. Okay. And this is the bar chart. Now we will give the name for cluster one based on this mileage, number of cylinders, horsepower. The cluster one can be given the name efficient compact cars this cluster represents small fuel efficient cars with lower horsepower lighter weight and the manual transmissions you can see here one is for manual these are likely compact or subcompact cars designed for efficiency and city driving cluster two heavy low performance cars so based on these values we have given the name this cluster includes heavier cars with moderate performance, automatic transmissions and fewer gears. These cars might be family sedans or larger vehicles focusing on comfort rather than speed. High performance sports cars. This cluster is character characterized by high performance cars, cars with large engines, high horsepower and manual transmission. These cars are designed for speed and performance. Powerful heavy duty cars. This cluster consists of powerful heavy duty cars with a very large engines, high horsepower and automatic transmissions. This might be trucks or SUVs designed for heavy duty performance. Cluster 5. Balanced mid-size cars. This cluster features balanced mid-size cars with moderate fuel efficiency, engine size and horsepower. These cars are likely versatile and suitable for a variety of driving conditions, offering a balance between the performance and efficiency. Now again we will go in SPSS, click here and save the cluster membership, continue, click OK and you go in the data view. Now you can see here there is a cluster membership, click here, 
right click sort ascending so all brands of the car in first cluster second the second one third fourth and fifth So this was all about K-means clustering in SPSS. For more videos on advanced data analysis using SPSS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I have uploaded videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also follow me on different social medias. Link given in the description box.